All right, so today I'm making a video on the Amazon Future Engineer Scholarship. Like, I wanted to do this video because I feel like there's like no content online about this program. In high school, like I was applying to this program and like I was trying to look at con like like learn about it on YouTube and like there's like nothing on there. So this is me contributing to the community of uh, knowledge. All right, so basically like AFE is a scholarship where you can basically just like gain, it's like 40K uh, for all your years of like four year college. So it'd be split up into like 10K a year, but it's only offered for like engineering or like CS majors. And it's only for undergraduate degrees as well. Oh, and like the, the main, like the, the main second part to this program is like, you also get a paid internship at Amazon after your freshman year of college. So it's like very highly recommended that you apply. Cause if you get it, then like, it will be super, like a super good opportunity. The eligibility, <laughs> the eligibility requirements are pretty basic. They're just like, you need to like demonstrate financial e need. You need to have like at least a 2.3 like GPA. Uh, obviously what I was saying, like you need to be engineering or CS major and you need to be a high school senior in the US. And you also need to be like authorized to work in the US. So I've like applied to several scholarships like in high when I did in high school. And I would say like that's a pretty broad like criteria spectrum. So like this is pretty much for anybody that's like in STEM. And this video is basically like just gonna be about how I got in basically like because like I want to help people that are trying to look into applying for this so that they can have like a, an example of that like of an application that worked so yeah like I'm not gonna go into like how to actually apply because it's pretty like basic like you just go to the website and press apply but there's actually two there's two websites one of them is on scholarship America and one of them is like the Amazon uh, like website uh, but the Amazon website will just send you to Scholarship America. So you just apply on the Scholarship America website, like directly through there. Like you don't do it on Amazon.com. One of the things they ask for is your cumulative GPA. And mine was a 4.2. Yeah, and another requirement is like if, if you had taken a computer science class before and I just took like this one in my high school that was called computer programming and applied problem solving. It's like a, just like a random class in my high school. And they also ask if you had done like, um, like competition type stuff. So I did FRC, which stands for first robotics competition, um, in high school. So I just put that as well, like mark that down. Uh, they also asked for your SAT score. So they asked for, I'm looking here, they asked for like, your highest like evidence-based reading and writing score and mine was 690. Okay, don't don't judge me like that. Just, I'm just bad at like, I'm just bad at that section. Um, and then I got on my highest SAT math score, I got 780, which was like fine for my major. And like they also asked you for your number one choice of college, but like it doesn't really matter. Like it, I don't think it really like made a difference because I, like I didn't go to my number one, so. All right, so now it goes into more of like the actual experience type section. So they asked you for like work experience. And so this is what I put. One of my sections was like independent contractor. Um, and I had done basically in high school, I like just got clients and did like CAD design for them, like product design. I think I started off doing stuff with clients from like Fiverr or you know, like just like online. And then I eventually got like referrals from people so yeah, and I got paid for that. So that was like one of my work experiences that I put down and it was like relevant because it's obviously like hardware design. And I applied for the hardware design section. Um, you can apply for either, I think it's like CS or hard, like software or hardware section of the program. And I obviously applied for hardware, That's hardware. <laughs> yeah, so I put that experience because I thought it was really relevant to the hardware section of the program. Uh, the second employer experience I put was like an internship I had at one of my local um, engineering companies. Essentially, they're like a incubator startup type thing of like STEM uh, companies. And like I just had like an informal informal internship with the guy that owns the place. And I would just like develop, I developed like this um, like electronics like slash 3d printing prototyping product and i just put that down in my in my list 
And like, it's super important to put all down all the like skills you learned or the, the specific like tangible like things that you did. Like for example, I put down, um, like I designed something in CAD using like Fusion 360, which is a CAD software and like Onshape, which is another CAD software. I also like just put down that I did like programming in Arduino, like which is the Arduino language is kind of like Java and C mixed together. Um, and I also just being really specific on like that you did like wiring and soldering, for example, like for this example. Another employer experience that I put down, I just I think I just put down as many as I could. Um, I don't think there was really a limit, but I also wanted to balance employer experiences with like other experiences because they asked you later on like what other experiences you had that are that you weren't like paid for, I guess. And this so that my third experience that I put down for this was like I labeled as like e-commerce endeavors. So in, in high school, I actually I think I started in middle school, uh, like researching and like doing projects on like uh, like e-commerce and like how to do like product research, how to do like marketing through social media platforms. And I had just done, I just wrote some tangible like characteristics of like endeavors that I like specific projects that I had led in the past with like any amount of money that I got from sales or like impressions that I might have gotten uh, like on a marketing campaign or whatever. <laughs> okay, and the last, well, the last employer experience I put was kind of a uh, just like, just to put it out there. So like in middle school, I think it was, or like beginning of high school, I was like a soccer referee. It wasn't too serious, but like I still put it because like, why not? Like they're giving me the space. Um, so it wasn't that serious. Like I just put like soccer yeah. referee and like AR, like the position that I put and what my specific responsibilities were. All right, so the next section is computer science activities, awards and honors. So my first, the first activity that I put was called the Davis Engineering Team. It was essentially like an engineering club that I like started in high school. It wasn't actually affiliated with the school, but it was basically just like an engineering club. And obviously like, that's like super relevant to the hardware program that I'm applying to, that I was applying to for AFE. So like make sure that the most relevant ones come first because like it's just like the prior, the prioritized ones. Uh, basically to like explain a little bit more about it, is it was a group of like six of us, uh, six members, and I was just like the president essentially, and I ran like uh, all the money deal stuff because we had sponsorships, and I did a lot of the CAD design and some of the wiring design wiring. So um, I just explained that like the tangible characteristics of that like in the like where they ask you about it. Oh, and I also like we also ran a like. An Instagram account so I just put down like the amount of followers we had or like engagement those aren't too important but I like I just put them down because I had the space but it doesn't have to be something that's like prioritized all right uh, the number two activity that I had was actually I don't know why I didn't put this one as number one but this was a uh, the first robotics competition like I was in this is high school robotics uh, I was on team Citrus Circuits 1678 uh, for two years so I had a lot of experience with that, and so I just dumped everything out into there, and like I was mechanism lead for my second year, and I just listed the achievements that we got throughout the year and the season. Like I'll give you, I'll give you a quick example. Like my for leadership position office, for, like for leadership position held for this activity, I wrote mechanism lead. And in parentheses, fill, facilitated prototyping, CAD design, assembly, maintenance, and iteration of a ro major robot mechanism. Mentored 10 new students in robot CAD design and part assembly. And then performed mechanical design and assembly iterations on the mechanism after every competition. So, yeah, like with the mentored 10 new members, like you definitely want to be, like if you're, if you're talking about something that can be quantifi quantified, like you definitely want to quantify it because that just makes that gives it like objective meaning rather than like intuitive or like subjective meaning. You know what I mean? Uh, the, third activity, the third activity I put down for the section was the Summer Academy of Math and Science at, at Carnegie Mellon. It was a summer program uh, the, at the, the summer after my junior year of high school. Basically, we just took classes and we did projects. Um, I did like an ECE project, electrical engineering project. And 
I did some other stuff while I was there. Like I started doing a research project, so I just uh, in math. So then I just labeled that. Uh, I highly recommend doing a, like one of those summer programs at a university because it like really gives you the perspective of like what it's like to be at university and um, like the classes and the people that you might meet there. And the honestly, the experience is like life changing for me. So I definitely, um, I definitely like recommend recommend looking into that type of thing, especially Sam's. Sam was Sam's was really good, and I ended up I ended up going to or being accepted accepted to CMU. So okay, my number fourth activity was an internship that I had summer after my sophomore year of high school. It was like a product development internship. It was more like a project at this company. Uh, and again, like just to describe it a little bit more, like I just did a project where I designed this like wrist and ankle splint made out of like cardboard or something similar. It was like a plain sheet and there were designated folds so that you could just like fold it up into the wrist splint or the ankle splint. So that was what I designed there. And I just like put, all, put down all the details of that into the application. All right, my fifth activity that I put down uh, is this interview platform that I started called Cinomalia Conversations. It's still live on my YouTube channel, like I'm still working on it actually. Uh, I just posted one like the other day or today actually. <laughs> yeah, it's essentially just like where I interview people that I meet on, that I connect with online or that I know and that I just reach out to. Like it wasn't, it's not super like STEM oriented, but there were a lot of interviews that I had that were like focused on STEM, like if it was like AI or like CS or um, like robotics, you know what I mean? So there were other ones like that I did of like soccer or like something random, but it still was relevant to STEM. So that's why I put it down as like the STEM in this category. All right, so now, oh, fuck. okay, okay. So now, <laughs> now we get into the short answer responses and I'm just gonna, gonna go ahead and read them, bro. Okay, it's been a while since I've read this or like even seen this before. So uh, I like there might be like a cringe alert right now. So. All right, so the question is, describe your career goals and, and aspirations. How do you plan to use engineering degree to accomplish your goals? All right, so this, this, is, what I, this is what I wrote. I live by the belief that we have the power to change things for the better. From an individual to a global scale, when I imagine myself making innovative changes, I imagine a life of fulfillment. I want to innovate in the areas of, of increasing quality of life worldwide, automating redundant processes, and contributing towards solving climate change. Uh, engineering is fundamental to achieving those goals in three ways. First, engineering allows me to develop high-level problem-solving skills using concrete logic, which is necessary for developing creative solutions. Second, Studying STEM gives me the math and science knowledge I need to truly understand the technical problems facing Earth. That understanding also shows me how to carry out my conceptual solutions and actually create technology. Third, the engineering space holds many, innovated, many motivated, innovative, and creative people with like-minded aspirations. Together, the engineers of my generation and I will solve the world's greatest problems. Okay, next short response is the following at amazon we have six leadership principles that we use to drive our business each or every engineer is expected to think big and demonstrate customer obsession um, to demonstrate your ability to think big and have customer obsession pick a problem in your school or your community that you think could be solved with the help of computer science robotics or hardware engineering describe the problem the impact it has and describe your think big solution that uses engineering tools. I honestly have no idea what I put this for the, for this. Like, I don't remember at all. <laughs> what the hell? Okay. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what I put for this. I'm interested in my class. I'm interested in my classmates negative experiences at school and how I could fix them. <laughs> Main responses I get. Okay. Main responses I get are feelings of discomfort caused by issues such as broken soap dispensers, unclean <laughs> bathrooms, broken locks on bathroom stalls, broken concrete walkways, and giant muddy puddles. 
This causes a bad campus experience for students because the problems go unnoticed and unfixed for, for weeks. That's actually true. Like, that actually was true. My solution would be to innovate upon the current available quadruped robot and design powered wheels at the knee joints of all four legs. This actually, I'm pretty sure there's things like this that exist. This design modification would maximize, maximize the robot's inspection time through being able to drive while eliminating the long-term damaging effects on the terrain applied to the power f powered wheel hardware electronics. Wait, 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 hold up, hold up. This design modification would maximize the robot's inspection time through being able to drive while eliminating the long-term damaging effects the terrain applies to the powered wheel hardware and electronics. Oh, I think, except example, ground impacts, water, mud, etc. I think I was referring to, um, like, if you if you drive a wheel rather than um, like step, you're decreasing the amount of repetitive forces upward onto the leg of the robot. The implementation of this new robot would massively decrease. Oh, I see. So it was a robot that would have, so it would have a leg, like, like a thing, but then on the knee or whatever, it would also have a wheel so that if it could, like, it could go over obstacles, but if it, if there was like flat ground, then it could just like, in, like put the wheels down or like bend the knee down and then just like drive forward. So it wouldn't have to keep on like repetitively, like going down into like hitting the floor so much. And it could just be faster. The implementation of this new robot would massively decrease the time for administration to identify and carry out specific solutions to the issues that my classmate that make my classmates have a bad experience on campus. Damn. Okay, so yeah. I mean that was a decent idea. Alright, so there is like a section for unusual circumstances. And essentially, the main thing I was worried about for this app, or I guess like for all my apps, was that junior year, I got a B in Calc uh, AB, so first year of Calc, and Physics Honors, which is like the first year of Physics pretty much, uh, for both semesters, I think. <laughs> so that was, that's a very like bad sign in terms of if you're applying to if you're applying to a scholarship program like with Amazon or whatever. So I was really worried about those two things and I kind of, and I like made sure that when I, in senior year that I would fix all that and I, like I did, like I got all A's like uh, both semesters. And so I wanted to make sure that they would know to like check my senior year get, or to check out four from my senior year grades because I wanted them to know that I had like fixed that Although it is like, even if you had to like fix that, it's still like really iffy because I don't know, like even, even, that, even though you're doing more advanced classes, it's still like iffy. Like you, they, you, they, they want to ideally see like consistent, like really high grades. But I just wanted to, like, I'm, like I said, like if you have something like that and you have like fixed it, like there's still like a possibility for you. Yeah, in terms of that's it for like, that's pretty much it. There's also the, the recommendations, and th they only give you one recommender. And I, and I asked uh, my robotics mentor to write me one because I like had, get I had grown like a really deep connection with him throughout working with him, especially in the second year when we were, uh, when I was more close to like the core team. So, I was a lot involved with him in terms of like the design process, um, stuff like everything like that. So I had grown close with him and like, you need to make sure that your recommender actually like knows you and it's even better if they know you in terms of STEM because, well, I mean like in, in terms of this scholarship because this is like hardware or software. So that's like really important. But that, yeah, that's, that should be all the information about my application for uh, the scholarship. Obviously there's also like a financial aid app. All right, so I'm, I might be leaving some information out of this video. Like if there are questions that you have, um, of stuff that I left out, I just like comment down below. Yeah, and I'll definitely be making a video like in the future when I actually do the internship after my freshman year of college. So stay tuned in like a year for that. Yeah, thank you for making it to the end of the video. Uh, check out my other videos and 
have a have a great day